Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. It's been another busy week for Dan and Lloyd, and they left me to introduce the podcast again. Now, is your marketing actually working? In this episode, we'll discuss innovative marketing approaches and the risks that come with shaking things up. If you're in a marketing team of a fairly big brand, or any brand, Mm. and everything's been done a certain way for a certain amount of time, if you suddenly want to innovate and change things up and it doesn't work, you look shit. But it doesn't have to feel like a gamble. You'll hear about the importance of cultivating a culture that embraces crazy new ideas. Mm. Those are the companies that that are going to really grow, where where all of the creative minds in the business feel comfortable enough to say crazy shit. Mm. To say like, let's jump out of the plane. I'm got any pants on. Okay, maybe not that crazy. Now, not all marketing is good marketing. And there's a lot of trickery out there. As it happens, that puts Lloyd in a bad mood. <laughs> it annoys me so much because I know there's some marketing agency or a freelance or someone go, yeah, we got all these clicks. And it's like, yeah. uh, you've got clicks on your ads because it's a mobile ad where uh, there's no human thumb small enough to not <laughs> click on it. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get into this. Get your marketing hats on. It's time for episode 46 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors Podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. I think most companies have no idea if their marketing is working or not. Oh, that is a bold statement at the start of a podcast to prick people's ears up and make them want to listen. (laughs) Thanks for the commentary. (laughs) Um, sorry, say, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we were too uh, taken over by you trying to be a bellend. No, please, sorry, I think it's important. I think most companies don't know if their marketing is working or not and what it's achieving. I agree. I really agree with this because I, we've had experiences with our clients and other businesses and within our own business. Not so much within our own business because we're obviously perfect. But I think we've got really successful clients that I can tell because we, or have had, uh, I can tell looking into their business, they're doing really well, but they have no idea why. But for as long as it's working, they don't really care. And the other side, there's businesses we've worked with or we've met and stuff, Mm. and their marketing isn't working and they're not doing well and they have no idea why. And I think the other side, with the good businesses where it's going well, I think that's the place where I find it really interesting. I think this Mm. is where it's not identified a lot of the time because things are going well. Mm. Um, How are they going well? Yeah, and I think that's where they Mm. could fail in one, five or ten years because they don't know what's... Yeah. yeah. I even had a... I've had... I'm not going to give too much detail, Mm. but I've had a sales call in the past Mm. with a person from a very large company Mm that actually said, yeah, we're all bought into investing in marketing. We know that there's not really a way to show that it's working, but we just know we need to do it and we know you're good. And I've kind of responded and sort of said, we can track what we're doing and track how it's working and, you know, and they were, they've were they been kind of surprised at that. This mm. is from a huge company. Mm. Like it's it's crazy to think that people just think you just chuck money at it and yes Mm. like you say there's companies that are hugely successful but because they're investing in marketing but they don't know where it's coming just like this podcast we've done episodes talking about our marketing strategy and we know that a big part of our lead generation is through linkedin and this podcast Mm. because we track everything Mm. because we ask customers where they found us and when they listen to us and we're tracking the numbers imagine if we just didn't realise it because even you, yeah. we had a wobble with this podcast a while ago where you didn't think it was doing a huge amount of good or, or we could sorry we yeah, could have done I, I wasn't sure if it was worth the time and effort because us recording it and our team working on it and asked you and you were able to basically say answer look at this data, data shut up of <laughs> these people that uh, agreed to work with us said the podcast had a major influence or was the mm. reason yeah they um, literally and, referenced the podcast in the first yeah. sales call and it's like <laughs> this is how much these deals are worth <laughs> so we so wouldn't have had up, that look. and then it's like okay that makes sense mm. whereas there's this um culture i think in the bigger businesses especially and like the corporations uh of like 
we've got this marketing budget signed off for a year. They this is one it. of the examples, and they've gone, oh, we've got to spend this, otherwise we lose it. And so it's such a, <laughs> where well, they're thinking of their department of like, we've got 50,000 more to spend, we've got to spend it for this, otherwise we lose it. They're not thinking actually, how can we best spend this, and how do we track the results we're going to get from it? It's... It's really disconnected. I, I think, think that's the businesses. trouble if you don't, from the top down, if you don't involve the whole business in understanding the bigger picture. Mm. Like the reason you're doing this is because we want to achieve this. Here's the bigger picture. Mm. I think it, it's it's dangerous when people within departments mm. don't get the bigger picture. So like you said, they're just, we've got this budget, we need to spend it. It's like, no, you need to understand that that budget is helping achieve the overall mm. objective. So you need to be thinking, how can we use this as best as possible? So yeah. do you think, um, do you think also, because people have worked with either marketing agencies or marketing people within their own business that have kind of told them over time that things can't be tracked uh, accurately really. You just have to spend this money and know that it's doing some good and stuff. It, it's, has there been that I over think time? Potentially, I think it's because ultimately marketing is selling a promise and you know there's nothing tangible you're not you haven't you can't show them marketing like, here's the marketing you're going to invest in mm. yes you can show examples and you can show data to back up other but it's not like you've got a product you mm. can put in front of them and say test this out and see what you think so it's selling a promise and i think it's been easy for marketers in the past to just promise stuff that sounds good so they win the deal and then they yeah. don't deliver um so if most marketing isn't working if your statement's well, correct Oh, yeah, I oh, mean, are you backtracking? Of course, there's marketing is working. Yeah, but I think most what I said was actually to correct you. Right. Yeah. Most people don't know which elements of their marketing are working and what right. it what it's achieving. Okay. So if most people don't know which elements of marketing <laughs> are, are what achieving and stuff, like mm -hmm. you just said, why aren't why aren't they trying to fix it? I think a few reasons. I think it's easier to. To not change and continue doing what you've always done. We've talked about the book Who Moved My Cheese before, which change is not good. I've done this the way I've, I've always done it this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's people don't like change. I think it's also risky for like if you're in a marketing team of a fairly big brand or any brand mm. and everything's been done a certain way for a certain amount of time, if you suddenly, you know, want to innovate and change things up and it doesn't work, you look shit and you think you could mm. lose your job. So why not just stick to the, you know, every year we invest in these other yeah, things. Yeah, like this wasn't really my decision. We've just always done it. So yeah. it's not going to come back on me. And I kind of get that. Like yeah. if you're trying to jump up the career ladder, you know, it's probably a bit risky I if you're like... really it's the higher ups in the business. It's there. They need to have a culture where it's like, look, we want you to try things. We want you to innovate. Yeah. Some of them might work and you yeah. won't just lose your job. They want to enable happens. the team to yeah. feel comfortable in putting those things forward. Mm. Those are the companies that, that are going to really grow where... where all of the creative minds in the business feel comfortable enough to say crazy shit. Mm. To say like, let's jump out of the plane. I'm granny pants on. Yeah. <laughs> crazy shit that's to do with marketing, Lloyd. Oh, oh right. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, yeah. Um, but that's where you, you get the good ideas. People feel comfortable. And this is why I think it's so good for us because we actively seek out those crazy mental ideas that mm. are... Do you know what? ...sound ridiculous. And just thinking about that like mm. we had a really good creative meeting about marketing our own business recently mm -hmm. and i did something for the first time which i thought was really useful um we said basically yeah, come up with <laughs> we come up with three ideas Ooh, and, this is and then i good. said come up with another one that's deliberately shit or like a wild card that's just mental yeah and i think to saying that allows people because some of the ones that were crazy, I think actually, one or two of them, we were like, that would actually be really cool to do that. Yeah. Um, and I think allowing people, because mm. at the same, like in those kind of spaces at work where it's like, come up with ideas, it does feel a bit like, oh, hang on, I'm going to say this. And the others might be like, that is a terrible idea. Yeah. What, what is she thinking? But that's what why it's thinking? important to build an environment where people feel comfortable. Yeah. And it is, it's easier said than done. It, you know, even if you are comfortable with the people you're around, it's sometimes you sort of hold back and like, oh, it's what if people hard. think my idea is crap? Yeah, because you're trying to show your worth and like, I'm good at this job. I'm going to put some good ideas mm. out there. So it still is still hard. But I think, yeah, I think that's really important enabling people yeah. to feel like they can share. Yeah. But like, have a culture where we love sharing shit mm. ideas because sometimes you think it's shit and there's one like absolutely yeah, amazing yeah, one that yeah, we yeah. go with. Yeah. 
on the subject of kind of calling out marketing BS and that kind of mm. thing, what do you think about marketing that tricks people? <laughs> oh, this is this is one of my biggest you hate this, don't pet you? peeves. So, what's an example? An example here could be something. You already that, sound annoyed that you're even saying oh, this. I just, it annoys me so much because I know there's some marketing agency or a freelancer or someone go, "Yeah, we got all these clicks," and it's like, yeah. uh, you've got clicks on your ads because it's a mobile ad where uh, there's no human thumb small enough to not <laughs> click on it. <laughs> yeah. Like it, this frustrates me with uh, a lot of local newspaper mm. websites now and it's because they oh they're filled can't sell with ads anymore. they fill them with so many ads that you, you can't read an article without accidentally clicking on something <laughs> yeah. and it just frustrates me because i think someone's reporting <laughs> yeah yeah 457 clicks today yeah and it's and then they're going cool that is that is brilliant we've got that many people yeah. here it's like no you've had 457 clicks mm. seven of them were like oh i'm interested in that shit business mm. And 450 have clicked on them and come off feeling negative about their yeah. business because they're like they've tricked me into clicking it. Mm. Sorry to brand, but I think it's just such a stupid also, way of doing mm. business. You're basically deceiving people, yeah. and also that starts the relationship up with off with a potential new customer in a negative way. Mm. They have this expectation of something, and then they click on it or buy it or something. Mm. Then they're pissed off. Mm. It's like you know marketing campaigns or approaches that. Um, overreg the benefits or like say stuff that isn't actually true it really bends the truth you know yeah. I think that's another good example of it where marketing sales and marketing let's be honest to do sales and marketing you have to sh portray whatever you're selling in the best light of course you do because if you're going this you is this? A <laughs> it's actually not that good uh, obviously you're not going to sell any yeah. but there's a line so yeah. if, if you're saying this is the best uh, toenail clippers toenail clippers in the world and you say like and they're gold <laughs> and people go bloody hell gold see the, go the gold alone's worth and then it's alright gold plated or like yeah gold. you get it and it's gold plastic and they're terrible <laughs> yeah. then it's like you're, ju you're just deceiving people to get a sale that's not yeah. marketing because no one's ever yeah. going to come back to a really good website that literally is this what we're talking about wish.com or wish mm. the wish app have you seen that where you order stuff from China and it's like yeah, I'm pretty two pound for an iPod and it's like made yeah. of wood or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, that'd be quite stylish. Wouldn't work there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, sorry, listeners, if I've been a bit ranty on that, but... Yeah, I just... It's, it's, I think we need to talk about it, though, because companies are continuing to do it's, this. It's like... It's the short-term mindset of, yeah, like, it is. let's trick people into taking an action or buying something to get a sale. It's like, let's get cash mm. into the business mm. or let's get... Or I'm a marketing agency. Let's, let's f make my client think we're getting loads of people yeah. to the website. But you're never going to win in the long term because you're just mm. tricking people. They're going to have a negative view of your business and what you're yeah. doing in the end. I think I've just finished reading Stephen Bartlett's book, Happy Sexy Millionaire. Mm. And there's something in there he talks about to do with invisible PR. Mm. And it's he basically, it, it's about just doing the right thing all the time. Mm. And in the end, it, everything will be good. It's like like karma. Yeah. Karma is, people talk about karma like woo woo, ooh, karma. Mm. It's some weird like magical thing. It's just logical that yeah. doing good things um, are all going to lead to good things coming mm. back. He talks about this example of employees getting promoted within his company and that um, like a girl was helped this guy who cut his finger and ran to a shop and got a plaster and she'd done these multiple things that he wasn't there but people told him about. Mm. It's like invisible good PR. Yeah. Even when your boss or whoever else isn't there and you're still doing the good things, mm they will come back around because people will notice them that you don't know. Yeah. And and the same will work in a negative way. If you're doing negative things, mm. that's only going to... Do you know what I mean? So it's it's important to... Yeah. So if you're doing that with your marketing, if you're doing... If you're deceiving people or tricking yeah, people... Yeah, it's only going to come back to you in a negative way. Mm. Are there any other marketing approaches? I'm just thinking of like other marketing that is really outdated that still happens. I, I think, to be honest, a lot of the cold calling or messaging... Mm. A lot of them start with saying either either tricking you again. Tricking, are they <laughs> yeah, another tricking thing of basically they don't admit it's a sales call. So they're like, I just wondered if uh, I, I really like what's on your website. I wonder if I could talk to you about this thing. <laughs> and they're tricking you into into thinking they're interested in something. And then they go, yeah. yeah, God, it's such a great chat. And um, do you want to buy the shit thing that I'm flocking? <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, that's what. Thing is, I think you get you get better at weeding those out mm. as you as you get more of them, don't you? Yeah. 
you can yeah, tell. That's another one. And it's an I know it's a numbers game, like, oh, trick five hundred people and one of them will go, Oh, okay, I'll buy that. A poor old person that doesn't get what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I do think it's that. It's that you'll just you'll trick someone or someone won't have the confidence to say no and they won't want yeah. it and they'll end up great business mantra and yeah. approach. Yeah. I also hate the guest post emails. Then if you see them. Yes. Um uh, but someone I know would like to write a guest post on your website and get a backlink. It's just like, go away. Yeah. Leave. There's a new one as well on the Instagram. I get this all the time where one account messages, direct messages you and says, hey, Dan, you should go and check out this company. They're really aligned with you. Mm. And it's like someone they're associated with. Uh, just annoying. <laughs> Please do better at marketing, people. There is tons of good marketing out yeah. there as well, but it's just still lots of... Yeah, don't deceive people. It's never going to end well, yeah. basically. Um, so we're saying, going back to like, oh, is marketing working or is it not working? Mm. If people are listening to this and they're like, well, I'm spent whatever it is, I'm spending 200 quid a year on marketing mm. or I'm spending 200,000 or I'm spending 20 million. Don't really know what's working, what's not. What, what would our advice be? Develop a strategy. I think so many, so many businesses just hear like someone say social media is a good thing to do and they go we should be on social media set up every social media account there is mm. and then get very little results because they don't have a clear roadmap and approach and there's no logic behind the channels they're using and things mm -hmm. so i think setting up a clear strategy and, and when we work with clients to do this is a few key steps so understanding what your top level objective is mm -hmm. why are you marketing do you want more sales mm -hmm. do you want more people to donate to a charity do you want to build brand awareness you know what what is it you're trying to achieve mm -hmm. and then work backwards to figure out who are you trying to convince to do that mm -hmm. what other humans are you trying to convince to do what you want them to do and do the research to understand who they are and then choose the channels you're gonna to use to reach them and convince them to do what you want them to do and then map out a plan of how you're gonna measure and track that. Mm. So what metrics, if you're saying, you know, uh, social media is a good channel to use because all of my 40 year old mums are on Facebook or let's say mm. Facebook, you know, what, what metrics are you gonna to track to show that you're achieving that overall objective? Is it views, is it clicks yeah. to the website? And I suppose a lot of businesses might have done all those steps up to like, working out accurate metrics and stuff so they're like well i've 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 got a strategy and i've worked out target market i'm i'm marketing to these yeah. people but to be honest 20 percent we kind of can see where it's come from the rest we're hoping it's doing all right but it's not accurate i guess then you'd kind of start at that point and go how can we the stuff we don't know yeah. if it's performing how can we get to a point where we understand that yeah and there's logical approaches like something we do with every customer that every lead that mm. approaches us but we ask them mm. in addition to all the other metrics we're tracking we ask them how did you discover us mm. and that that fee you know that's not always a hundred percent accurate because yeah. they may think they discovered you somewhere whereas they've seen you but i think having a good for a business like ours have, where we can talk to people decision makers having a process like that's really good mm. and that can be recorded and that data can be recorded yeah. i think if people have websites if, if you know if, uh, it's a brand that's selling shitloads of products around the world or around the uk whatever it is i think that there are now um pieces of software you can have on your website that if you've got a thousand customers a month you can send something out to a hundred of them um just asking where they've heard of your stuff and you yeah. can give incentives so it's yeah. not annoying for them you can say yeah i'll give you a fiver off your next mm. shop if you let me know what so there are ways to get this yeah. data yeah because some people will be thinking that's that's fine, but I do leaflets and I think they're working, uh, but Prove I've got it. no way of tracking it. Well, go out to ten percent of your customers, see how many of them say it's leaflets that made them contact yeah. you, or use a coupon then, code on your leaflets yeah. so that you can track that. Like there's, there's ways of with every mm. channel you're using, and it's especially effective with digital. It's so much easier to track this with digital because you mm. you know you can literally track people viewing an ad, for example, mm. clicking on it going to a website i think it's important clever thing with this do. though saying you can track that stuff i think it's it's having a if you've got a marketing agency or, or if you've got an internal marketing resource i think it's building up a good enough relationship and trust in them that no one's trying to hide things to to try and make things look more positive than mm. they are because i think trouble with this we can say this of like make sure you're tracking things but even we've we've worked with other marketing agencies and things and you can see that oh they want to continue doing this job so they're kind of upping things a bit like yeah. oh no those sales that you say are from that are actually from yeah. this and it's like without that honesty and the transparency and the people everyone involved knowing that 
look, we don't want any pumped up figures. Or mm. we, we want the most accurate look as we can. And that's important to yeah. us. I think that's hard. In, it comes back in to businesses. the invisible PR thing and doing the right thing, though. Because mm. we, we could probably in the short term make way more money by making up lies and inflating things that we've done. Mm. But then it would come back and bite us in the ass. And it, yeah. you know, it's not going to help in the long term. So yeah. do good marketing stuff. Yeah. Okay. I will. Good. Cool. Anything else to discuss on this episode of the Business Anchors Podcast? Um, I just think everyone, if you've enjoyed this, tell other people to listen to it because we're starting to build up a bit more of a community now, people yeah. listening. And and yeah, give us a review if you haven't done so. I was going to say that I would really love it, Business Anchors. If you do listen to this and you haven't left a review, um, wherever you can leave you're a review. You're a terrible person. No, you're not a terrible person. But I do want to just make it clear because I don't think we talk about this enough how much a review really helps. Uh, us as people and mm. getting this podcast out there so i know this is a bit cringy i feel like we need that charity music that yeah like, it is a bit like that it's a bit cringy asking so straight you know being so honest but i would really love it if you've got value from this podcast if you could take five minutes to leave a review it could just be a sentence saying yeah really good like listen to that but it really helps yeah. the algorithm and everything get this and out post on social people. media and share the link and do no, loads of Dan, stuff i'm trying to really concise oh, okay. call to action okay, cool. uh, so they do this yeah just ignore dan guys don't the more you do that. the more we like you though okay i like you all equally <laughs> all my children <laughs> all my anchors creep to Anything else, Lloyd? No. Just see you, see you next time, business anchors.